Welcome to the True Insights Weekly Market Monitor podcast, where we explore various topics that drove financial markets this week. Make sure to subscribe to the True Insights newsletter to stay up to date on all of our new podcast episodes and investment research publications. In today's episode, we highlight the start of the earnings season and the daunting task of big tech stocks to beat the outrageous expectations of investors at already elevated valuations. We also look at the endless strength of the U.S. labor market and how this feeds the higher for longer yields narrative. Yet, even the ECB's biggest hawk is having second thoughts about further rate hikes. In addition, we look at the spiking interest payments the U.S. has to make on its debt and how this limits the room for fiscal stimulus once the next recession arrives. Next, we summarize an extensive piece on China we put out this week. It focuses on the growing resemblances between today's state of the Chinese economy and the China growth scare in 2015 and 2016. Finally, our fear and frenzy sentiment index remained in frenzy for a third consecutive week, suggesting a pullback is imminent. The earnings season has started and so far has two faces. U.S. investment banks, which traditionally report early in the season, performed well. On the other hand, the first big tech stocks releasing their earnings, Netflix and Tesla, disappointed investors. In addition, a surprising downward revision from Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, which provides chips for companies like Apple and NVIDIA, casts a dark cloud over the semiconductor market. TSMC explicitly referred to investors' extreme expectations regarding artificial intelligence. With just over 80 companies having reported, the parallel with the previous quarter is remarkable. So far, Almost all sectors reported better than expected earnings, but the market reaction has been negative in most cases. This underscores that investors have extrapolated their expectations too far and that markets are being driven to a large extent by macro and central bank hopium. Will this be the moment of truth for earnings? Investors are fixated on declining inflation and the end of the Federal Reserve's tightening cycle. Leaving aside that the odds of further declines in headline inflation are small due to base effects, these same investors forget that the Fed operates under a dual mandate, and the other side of that mandate points to a less favorable monetary policy. After a false move in June, the four-week moving average of initial jobless claims dropped to 238,000, returning to the range observed between March and May. As a result of stronger-than-expected labor market data, interest rates increased this week. The two-year Treasury yield rose nearly 25 basis points to 4.85%, reflecting the ever-shifting balance between lower inflation and the need for less restrictive rates and the higher for longer policy pursued by the Federal Reserve. Each week that interest rates remain at these elevated levels means a greater economic impact visible several quarters later. Central bank hawks seem to be disappearing. The biggest Fed hawk, former St. Louis Fed President Bullard, has left altogether, while the most prominent hawk of the ECB surprisingly showed his dovish side. In a recent Bloomberg interview, ECB Governing Council member Klaus Knott indicated that further monetary tightening after the ECB's July meeting is far from guaranteed. His thoughts are not unreasonable, though. Over the last few months, the ECB has collectively looked into the rearview mirror only, simply because the central bank was utterly wrong when inflation skyrocketed. Monetary policy has primarily reflected central bankers' fear of making the mistake of ending up behind the curve twice, perhaps not regained courage and is now willing to look forward again. If historical relationships hold even slightly, inflation will decrease significantly after the summer. This applies particularly to headline inflation, but core inflation will also decline. And with moderate or even negative economic growth, things can change quickly. Ironically, inflation may first rise during summer due to significant price increases in holiday-related services. For example, in Sweden, the prices of rental cars, plane tickets, and package holidays increased by over 20% in June. Rating agency Fitch estimates governments will pay a combined 2.3 trillion U.S. dollars in interest expenses this year, the highest amount ever. To put this figure into perspective, it represents an increase of about 2.1% of global GDP. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, or OECD, 
estimates that U.S. net interest payments relative to GDP will spike to approximately 4% this year and are expected to rise to 4.4% of GDP next year. For comparison, interest costs as a percentage of GDP have been around or below 3% over the past 30 years. The combination of higher debt and interest rates means the U.S. government has significantly less room for anti-cyclical fiscal policies when the next recession hits. However, not every country's interest payment pattern resembles that of the U.S. Austerity champion Germany has an interest expense to GDP ratio below 1%. And with its yield curve control policy, Japan is even lower at 0.6%. Nonetheless, it is mostly the U.S. that determines whether these countries will face a recession or not. Almost every day, Chinese authorities announce new stimulus measures. The most recent ones are aimed at promoting car and electronic sales. This is a follow-up from early June, when the Ministry of Commerce launched a nationwide campaign to increase car ownership. The real estate sector faces many headwinds and is also eagerly awaiting more support. Chinese authorities are said to consider relaxing conditions for buying a house. While the number of measures to stimulate the Chinese economy increases every week, much of the announced stimulus is seen as marginal and temporary. So far, China has shown little interest in a comprehensive stimulus program involving multiple interest rate cuts, lowering the required reserve ratio for banks, and conducting extensive renegotiations, extensions, or even restructuring of debt in the real estate sector and from local government financing vehicles. As a result, the comparison with the 2015 to 2016 China growth scare is becoming increasingly relevant. In one of our recent insights, we delved deeper into this topic. Here are some of the main conclusions. First, between 2015 and 2016, Chinese imports fell nearly 20% in US dollars. Currently, Chinese imports are 5% lower than their peak, underscoring cooling domestic demand. Second, China's real estate sector is worse now than in 2015 and 2016. Prices of new and existing homes have dropped for an extended time, and construction growth has turned negative. Third, China is staring at deflation, with headline inflation down to zero. Fourth, the Chinese yuan has weakened significantly in recent months. Between April 2015 and early 2016, the MSCI World Index fell by almost 20% when the Chinese currency was devaluated. And in 2022, the MSCI World Index fell by even more than 20% when the UN also plummeted. So far, this year looks entirely different when it comes to equities. U.S. retail investors are the most optimistic since April 2021, which is bad news for stocks. The net percentage of bulls in the AAI investor survey has risen to nearly 30%, pushing it to an extreme level. Given that this survey is the most robust contrarian sentiment indicator in the Fear and Frenzy Sentiment Index, the recent bullishness among retail investors pushes the index toward frenzy. As a result, the Fear and Frenzy Sentiment Index has remained in frenzy territory for the third consecutive week, which increases the likelihood of a market pullback. That's all for this week's True Insights Weekly Market Monitor podcast. In today's episode, we discuss the start of the earnings season and the formidable task of big tech companies to beat expectations. We talked about how the U.S. labor market keeps pushing bond yields higher, but that some central bank hawks are adopting a more dovish tone. And about spiking interest costs and the challenging outlook for the Chinese economy, which increasingly resembles that of the China growth scare. Finally, we highlighted that our Fear and Frenzy Sentiment Index has been in frenzy for three weeks now, suggesting the end of this bull market is near. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed what you heard, consider becoming a paid member to access all of our investment research charts and trade ideas. Until next time, bye.